Hi, John the Van Guy again. Yet another project. Uh, this is another Talbot Express. Yes, as if you didn't know already, this is a good one. Uh, Mark II. Anyway, I thought uh, it's quite nice actually. <laughs> Uh, enough of that. Needs a bit of welding, uh, but that shouldn't be too much difficult. What I was a bit little worried about was the, I'm not that happy with the engine power, getting up hills and things like that. Uh, just driven two and a half hours in the thing, and it just needs more pull somehow. So what I thought I'd do is check on a few things, do a compression test initially, and um, see if there's any, and look at and check the coolant. The coolant is a little bit mucky. The radiator itself coolant was okay, but it was mucky in here. So I've cleaned all that out and uh, drained it and filled it with water at the moment. Um, and also, uh, the, for the compression test, I got this thing, a draper. Um, where's the... Well, you can never find things. Uh, what do I do with it? It's in here somewhere. Yeah, it was a lot easier than I thought. I haven't done a compression test before. It was relatively straightforward. This is it. Uh, and basically you take your spark plugs out and then you carefully screw this in. You discharge anything in it by pressing that switch and it gives you PSI and bar. So, so what I did, <laughs> took the plugs out one by one, they came out okay. And uh, you need a, obviously, you need a, oh, a 14 mil uh, with the rubber insert to actually go down those tubes. And then you shouldn't have a problem. Actually, so they came out. So I did one at a time. Well, the idea is you run your engine for about 10 minutes first, get everything warm. Then you disconnect the, uh, well, this is on a, uh, a cutout anyway. So I didn't, you di disconnect your ignition one way or another. And also um, stop the fuel pump. Uh, I couldn't stop the fuel pump, it's a manual fuel pump on this, so I simply disconnected the fuel pipe and put it into a bottle. Uh, so the thing won't start up when you're messing about doing the pressure test. Now the pressure test, uh, you, some people say take all the plugs out, I didn't. I took them out one at a time and did, and did it one at a time. And uh, what did I get? Well, uh, I got about 140, 145 PSI on each one. And apparently uh, that is perfectly acceptable. Um, but if you go less than 100, then you've got things to worry about on one of them, 100 PSI. So, and they, they should be all within a range of about 10 PSI uh, around that. So what you do is you screw this in um, and then you crank the engine uh, four or five times, give it a good crank over. I, I counted four seconds actually. <laughs> and then um, for each one or five seconds, uh, five seconds doesn't matter. And uh, on each one, what happens is the needle will actually go up and stop uh, when it gets to full pressure, obviously. Apparently, uh, you should also take the first reading, the first leap that the needle takes when you crank, but I didn't have anybody here to do that, so I wasn't able to do that. You can also do a wet test, apparently. Once you've done that, you put in the, uh, pour a little bit of oil in each one before you do the pressure test, and the oil will act as a seal, especially if your rings are on the way out, the piston rings. <laughs> And uh, that, and that should give you better compression, it appears to, but it also gives you an indication if your rings are worn or the, uh, the barrel of the cylinder is worn. So that was that. Now, what I really want to do to talk today is the tappets. I thought, while I'm at it, why not do the tappets? So to get the, the rocker box cover off on these, it's only two bolts, two bolts. See, oh, okay. So there and they're dead easy. 
and then you maneuver the thing off um, it just lifts up now there was a problem with this there's oil oil over all of this it's right messy and i found out what the problem was there it is that is the rocker box cover gasket its gasket is nice but it's been put in kinked it's obviously slipped when they're putting it in and uh so it's got now kinks in two places uh and i think that's had it really so i've ordered another one and uh so i think the trick is when you're doing it is to possibly put some sort of uh gasket sealer uh that's what i'm going to do and put it in in this groove and then put the gasket on top of it so it actually sticks in there uh, before you actually put the, uh, the head back on. Okay, so that's that. <laughs> well, the next thing was to do the tappets. Now, you think that's relatively straightforward. If you've got your little manual, which is this, which is the, you have to have, all petrol models, the uh, Russic manual, classic. Um, and I used the system they show here. So you count from the uh, from the flywheel end is number one, two, three, four. And obviously this side are all the exhaust valves, this side are all the inlet valves. So using this system, you have to know really what your measurements are going to be needed, going to be needed. and uh, for the induction about 0.1 and for the exhaust valves 0.25. So, so basically you turn the engine over, you crank the engine over, and I'll talk about that in a minute, that caused a few problems. Crank the engine over slowly and when number one exhaust valve uh, is open so that would be number one exhaust valve when that's open then three and three induction and four exhaust should also be open so that's the time to adjust relatively straightforward to adjust you've got to have your obviously your feeler gauges and uh which is obviously a must you've got to have the fuel gauges otherwise you can't do it um, so i put get the two out one for exhaust and one for induction get them ready and so all you're doing is uh you so if i was if i was doing if one was open i would go to three in less so it's one, two, three inlet, and you should get them to rock. So that would rock three inlet and four exhaust. So four exhaust, and you'll find that will rock as well. So, uh, so all you're doing is it's really straightforward. All you're doing is loosen that, that uh, bolt. Uh, you turn with a screwdriver. You turn the centre bit. Uh, until with you put your feeler gauge in there, you turn the centre bit until it grips the feeler gauge. So it just grips nicely, and you just about slide the uh, feeler gauge through, in and out, <laughs> and then holding that nut, you carefully screw in. Uh, to, uh, no, no, sorry, <laughs> you hold the center rod in place with the screwdriver and and then you uh, tighten up the nut you might have to try it a few times so because you can uh, move it slightly as you're tightening up and over tighten so just keep checking and you'll get it and then you work your way around and do that and so follow the sequence one three four two and then do it and then it should be okay Right, that's straightforward. Uh, 
and it'll be, it's kind of self-explanatory once you get in there and do it. Now, what I'd found as a problem was turning the crankshaft over. You'd think that would be simple, wouldn't you? Well, one way to do it, there are obviously other ways to do it, my way, is there's a crankshaft pulley, which is the bottom pulley all the way down there, uh, and that's the crankshaft nut on the end. It's a 35 mil uh, nut on the end, so you've got to have a 35 mil socket. Right, so that's okay. The only thing is, you haven't got a lot of room down there. And once you've got the socket on, uh, you can't always get the ratchet in to turn the socket, which I found in this particular, and it didn't have the right length socket. I had uh, a 35 mil socket. Everybody has 36, 34s, nobody has a 35. So probably worth investing getting one. I did have some uh, longer 35 mil sockets and rather than wait for one to come through there's none in Salisbury at all um, what I did was uh, use an angle grinder a bit vicious and uh, came off easy enough and there we are there's a 35 mil uh, long nose uh, cut down so that meant I could get the thing down there but still couldn't get the ratchet on. So what did I do? And this is a touch of brilliance, I thought. What you do is, if you put, uh, I used a, what they call a coach bolt, and put it through the hole there. So the end of the coach bolt came up through there and tightened up uh, a nut on the end. Uh, it's one of those nuts with a, a locking nut, if you if you like. So that meant I had quite a relatively short now, relatively short socket, which allowed me, which gave me a nut on the end, which you could use a ring spanner. And if you have an adjustable ring spanner, a seventeen in this case, which I have in the kit down there. Uh, I was able to put that on the end of the crankshaft nut and using the ring spanner was able to turn this and turn the crank and slowly and it goes in a clockwise direction right so you can actually and so you, singly you can actually bend down over it and slowly uh, crank the engine and you'll watch the valves going up and down um, obviously you're waiting initially you want your well, I did it from, from the, <laughs> what they say, get the exhaust one first. So you work it round until the exhaust one uh, goes down. So it's pressed down, so it's open. And then you can check check them out and work through the sequence. Straightforward enough. So there's a little tip. Uh, took me a while to come up with that. It's kind of obvious when, the <laughs> when, you, when you see it. Uh, and, uh, but it kind of works. Okay, I think that's all I can think of at the moment. Um, we'll report back. Okay, bye.